Dark matters all around us, astrophysicists say. So far, however, we've only been able to measure it indirectly through its gravitational pull. Or have we? A team of physicists say that we might already have direct evidence for dark matter, we just haven't noticed. Let's have a look. According to current estimates, dark matter makes up about 80% of all matter in the universe. It doesn't interact with light or any sort of electromagnetic radiation, so it doesn't show up in telescopes. However, it has mass and so it has a gravitational attraction. And that has observable consequences. For example, it speeds up the rotation of galaxies and makes gravitational lenses stronger. The problem is that the same observational effects could also mean that we don't understand how gravity works on large scales. This alternative explanation is known as modified gravity. The question of which one is right has been open for decades and physicists still haven't found a smoking gun signal for one or the other. The best way to demonstrate that dark matter is right would be to find evidence for the particles that it's supposedly made up of. The authors of the new paper now say we might already have this evidence. It's a strange signal that comes from the center of our Milky Way that has confused astrophysicists for more than a decade. It comes from the central molecular zone of our galaxy that's basically downtown Milky Way. If regular space is the suburbs, this is where the new stars hang out, pay too much for hydrogen cocktails and sometimes blow up. But the gas in our galactic center has an odd property. It absorbs light in the infrared, just like the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Scientists measure this by looking at light from stars behind the gas clouds and checking what gets absorbed. This missing infrared light is weird because hydrogen gas normally forms a pair, that's H2. For a molecule to absorb in the infrared, however, you need something that can vibrate. That means it needs to have at least three atoms. And from the frequency of the infrared light that gets absorbed, astrophysicists are pretty sure that what they're looking at is H3+, so a combination of three hydrogen atoms with an electron missing. They see this like 100 times more than expected. So what's going on? The authors of the new paper say they figured it out. They say that dark matter is made of a medium mass particle with a mass in the range of some mega electron volt. That's much lower than the mass that they're looking for at the Large Hadron Collider, but much higher than the energy that they're looking for with axion searches. Particles with a mass in that range would be compatible with some of the atomic anomalies that we've previously talked about. It's an interesting mass range that has been somewhat neglected. They now say that when these dark matter particles hit each other, they annihilate and decay. This doesn't happen all that often because the stuff is so thinly distributed, so it's not easy to detect. But this annihilation would generate electrons and positrons. These hit the hydrogen and ionize it. And if the hydrogen gas is ionized, it likes to form H3+. So dark matter generates electrons and positrons which ionize the gas and that creates the signal. Even better, it might also help to explain another curious observation called the 511 keV line. That's a gamma ray emission at an energy of those 511 keV, which also comes from the galactic center. We've known about this since the 1970s, but the origin was never clarified. Since the signal has this quite narrow energy of 511 keV, we have a pretty good idea where it comes from. It almost certainly comes from positrons crashing into electrons and then annihilating, because that creates two photons with the most likely energy of those 511 keV. You see the connection? The researchers say that at least part of this signal could be a side effect of the dark matter giving rise to the electrons and positrons. If you've already forgotten half of what I said, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. In case all this sounds promising, there are reasons to be skeptical. There have been various previous observations that astrophysicists attributed to dark matter, 
which later turned out to be something else. For example, about 15 years ago, there was an excess of positrons in cosmic rays that was supposedly dark matter. But now it seems more likely to come from supernovae or active galactic nuclei. Dark matter was also supposedly responsible for an excess of super highly energetic cosmic rays coming from the center of the Milky Way, but they're now believed to be due to millisecond pulsars. So how could one figure out whether that's right? One could look at the exact distribution of these signals and see if they match with the amount expected from dark matter. What I mean is that astrophysicists have already inferred from the motion of stars in our galaxy how much dark matter must be in the galactic center, and it isn't just a constant density. That means one could check whether the density matches the signal. Personally, I think if progress on dark matter continues to be this slow, the stuff might have enough time to become conscious. We'll finally detect it when it starts leaving one-star reviews on astrophysics papers. Completely misrepresented my mass distribution. Would not recommend. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large languages models and they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.